Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Dana. I upload new videos twice a week. So if you haven't already, now is a great time to subscribe to my channel so you can stay on top of all of those new videos. My friends over at Naoki Matcha sent me this awesome little haul of matcha to try. I, I already drank through one of them and I'm on to another one. I just can't get enough of their matchas. So here is what they sent me. These three adorable, beautiful little tins of matcha and this little bag of a special one. So I thought today I would try one of their recipes from their website. Every morning I drink a matcha shot and I make it with the bowl and the whisk and then pour it into like a shot glass and take the shot. Like I have my method of making it. But I went on their website and kind of looked through their different recipes for like lattes and things. And like every once in a while, I'll want like a matcha treat or a matcha latte. But for the most part, I don't love the taste of matcha. And I think that's partially why I choose to do it as a shot instead of like drinking a full cup. So I was going through all their different recipes and I saw that they had one for a matcha shot and that their method is different than mine because they used a little mason jar. And coincidentally, I just got these cute little mason jars from a free cycle group I'm in. So mine's a little different than theirs, but I figured it would be fun to try a different way. If you wanna see how I make my matcha shots normally, I showed it in all of my T I drink in a day videos that I did in December. So I can link one of those below if you're curious, but I just thought today I'd try something new. So they sent me this fine yummy matcha, fragrant yummy blend, ceremonial grade, renowned in Japan for its production of sweet and delicious green tea, award-winning blend at the national tea competition. So this is the one that I already drank through. I loved how sweet it was for a straight matcha. So I loved this one. And then the next one that I've opened is this fine Uji matcha, matcha superior, ceremonial grade, 100% pure Japanese matcha, first harvest, grown in Uji, Kyoto home to Japanese tea cultivation since 1191. So I've had a couple shots of this one and I really, really like it. This is one I haven't opened yet. It is Fine Japanese Matcha Master's Collection Limited Edition Chiron Harvest 2019. And there's no information on the back of this one, but I really love the black and the gold. I just think it's so sleek and beautiful. Then there is this one that's in a packet and it is Master's Collection Ceremonial Grade Matcha. It's the Uji Tawara Special. And it's 100% Japanese matcha. So a lot of awesome stuff. I can't believe they sent me all this for free. Matcha is not cheap, so this was a blessing I can't even describe. So I went on their website and there was a lot of really cool information. I really enjoyed learning about Usucha and Koicha. I hope I'm saying them correctly. Those are the traditional ways of preparing matcha for a Japanese tea ceremony. Usucha is uh, known as thin tea, so it's a thinner preparation of the matcha. And it's like when you have that rich frothy layer on top, like that nice layer of froth. So I would say that that's more consistent with like, if you just made a cup of matcha at home, like what it would be like. And koicha is the thick tea and it has a much thicker consistency, so it's more concentrated. You use about double the amount of matcha and half the amount of water. So it's going to be much thicker. And I've always wanted to go to a Japanese tea ceremony. So I read a little bit of information here on Naoki Matcha's website and it's really cool. So it says, what is the matcha tea ceremony all about? The traditional Japanese tea ceremony has existed for hundreds of years and is an important part of Japan's cultural heritage. It is difficult to accurately describe the full meaning of the matcha tea ceremony in English. The matcha tea ceremony is meant for guests to enjoy the hospitality of the host 
and it also serves as a contrast for the parties involved. A quiet, contemplative moment amid the hectic pace of life. As a matter of being respectful to the Japanese culture, we must remember that making usucha and koicha by itself does not make your activity a matcha tea ceremony. Usucha and koicha are only the types of matcha tea served in such traditional tea ceremonies. Becoming a host of a matcha tea ceremony requires years of learning and practice. Every minute detail has its own imbued meaning and requires specific steps and procedures. Individuals who are keen to learn the art of Japanese tea ceremony will learn and practice at one of the several established tea schools. So that is really interesting. And then it does show instructions here on how to prepare the thick tea and the thin tea. But then they have recipes for a matcha oat milk latte, classic matcha latte, just a regular matcha tea. And I love their photos. They have that like clean white background look that I love. And I love it especially with matcha because it really lets like the beautiful vibrant green color of the matcha shine. There's even a recipe for cold brew matcha, a matcha affogato, which is matcha poured over ice cream. I've had a regular affogato, which is with usually gelato and espresso, and it's super, super good. And I can only imagine it'd be awesome with matcha too. Then there's matcha green tea cookies with white chocolate chips. These are matcha financiers. So a lot of really cool stuff. But for me, I took a look at the shots because that is how I like my matcha and thought I would give that a try today. So there's some really cool information here about the difference between like an espresso shot and a matcha shot. So I'll just go ahead and read like the highlights of that. Introducing the matcha shot. It is one of the newer ways to drink matcha that emerged as people tried to find new methods outside of the traditional asucha and koicha. It makes for a convenient matcha energy drink. Interestingly, the ratio of water to matcha used in the matcha shot is about the same as usucha. The matcha shot is not for everybody, especially people who have just started to drink matcha. The matcha shot is much more concentrated and maybe too much to handle. If you're new to matcha but looking for a matcha energy drink, we recommend that you consider trying cold brew or matcha tea instead. And see, like, I don't love the taste of matcha, but that's like why I do a shot, because I like to just know I'm getting all of the antioxidants all in at once, and then I can like go about my day. And I like how it makes me feel. The caffeine content in matcha really depends on how much matcha powder you use. One teaspoon of matcha powder will contain approximately 70 milligrams of caffeine. For comparison, a standard double espresso will have about 80 milligrams of caffeine. So it's about comparable to a double espresso. The key difference, and look at this picture with a, a matcha shot next to an espresso shot. Oh, I love that. That's such a cool photo. The key difference between coffee and matcha is that the caffeine in matcha will be released slowly thanks to the presence of L-theanine. L-theanine is like the compound in, in all tea from the Camellia sinensis plant that gives you like that relaxed focus. It's like that zen-like feeling. Feeling. In matcha, it's way more, like you're getting way more of that L-theanine because it's the tea leaf ground up into a powder. So when you drink matcha, you're consuming the tea leaf as a whole instead of just steeping it in water and consuming the liquid of the leaves. Like you're actually ingesting the leaf itself. So that's why you're getting more L-theanine, more antioxidants, more caffeine than you would from a regular cup of green tea, black tea, any kind of tea. This means that even though the caffeine in matcha is similar to espresso, you will only experience about an hour of increased focus and energy after drinking espresso. However, your caffeine boost will last for about four hours with a matcha shot. And what kind of matcha powder should you use to make a matcha shot? You want to use good quality matcha because you are only making it with water. The standard serving is one teaspoon or two grams of matcha. 
Okay, so here's where it goes a little bit different, like when we get into the method of how we make it, because I like to use my whisk and my bowl. I make it sort of the traditional way where I whisk it up, get all the clumps out, and then I pour it into a shot glass. But here it says no bamboo whisk is required for a matcha shot. All you will need is a small glass jar that can be closed. And the ingredients are just one teaspoon of matcha powder and 2.5 to 3.5 ounces of hot water at a temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit and adjust the amount of water to your liking after testing this recipe out. Okay, so now I'm just gonna follow what it says. It says to measure out a teaspoon of matcha and the water. I have my little mason jar here. Isn't this cute? It has like a textured glass. I wasn't thinking I would use this for matcha or tea or anything, just as like a you know, food storage and whatnot for like little things. But uh, I guess whatever works. And since I've already opened this one, I don't wanna open the two that are still sealed because I wanna keep them nice and fresh for as long as possible. So I'm gonna use the one I've already opened and it came in this aluminum bag inside the tin. So I just like to roll up the bag and put a rubber band around it and put it back in the tin because you really want to keep out all the light and air. You want to keep it as airtight as possible to keep your matcha fresh as long as possible. And I have this brand new matcha spoon from the brand Tea Angle. They were kind enough to send me a package of flavored matchas. So I feel like this month is like matcha month for me, which is perfect because it's January. We're all trying to like get our health on track and uh, matcha is the most beneficial tea you can drink for your health, so it's perfect. And I'm gonna use one of these. I believe it is equivalent to one teaspoon. So I just have one leveled off spoon. And look at that color, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I remember the year I worked at David's Tea, this bright green was like the color of the year, like the Pantone color of the year. And I was like, it's matcha green. <laughs> and this is the Uji matcha. So this is the one that is first harvest and grown in Uji, Kyoto. And here's just the teaspoon of matcha in the bottom of my mason jar. I just can't get over the color. It's so beautiful. So I never like do this where I shake the matcha. I haven't done this in a very long time. I'm so used to using the whisk, but I don't think I'm gonna measure my water. I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it. So it says to measure out the matcha. Oh, it says water first. Yikes. Yeah, that makes sense because it's getting like stuck in the creases. So I already messed up this recipe because I got too excited about the matcha. It makes more sense for it to float on the top. I feel like that would have been, uh, that would have prevented some clumps, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put in our water. I think I'm gonna put it like about to here, like where the lip of it ends or where it starts. And this is water that was hot earlier, but it's not hot anymore. It is a little bit warm still, but not anywhere near like boiling. And this is what we have. You could tell how concentrated it is because that, that green is so dark. So then it just says, add the matcha and close the jar. Shake it vigorously for about 30 seconds. If there are still some visible clumps, keep shaking until the clumps are completely dissolved. Just put our lid on and shake. I do have to mention, it could be a little bit dangerous to shake hot liquid in an enclosed container because the pressure will build up. So you do wanna be extra careful when you do this. Um, I just opened it and let it breathe for a second before I shake it a little more, just so we don't get so much buildup that it'll like spray you and spray me in the face when I open it or anything like that. Because I mean, we don't want our water too hot, but we still are working with hot liquids and we don't want to get hurt. So be very careful when you do this, but you wanna shake it real good. And yeah, it definitely would have been beneficial if I put in our matcha after, cause you can see I've got some buildup like around the sides of the jar. So I should have paid better attention. And I'm just gonna take a spoon and kind of like go around just to get that. And then I'll give it like one more little shake before I go ahead and shoot it. This feels so like cute. Like I think it's cause it's a tiny jar. It's just like, <laughs> Like it feels like a cute little thing to do. And I mean, I suppose you could carry it 
like around like to work or something if you're going out and you're gonna need that boost of energy you can like prepare it ahead of time here is my final shot and you can see I feel like before it looked a little prettier like the little layer of foam on top now it's like a little bit more like dispersed I guess but it does have a nice like frothy top layer and it smells super, super strong. Like that grassiness and that like light sweetness and that vegetalness, you definitely get all of that in the smell. But I think I wanna take a sip first, just to like see really the taste. Like I never really do that. I always just do my shot. So I wanna like give it a sip and see what I think. Definitely grassy but kind of smooth at the same time. This is like half as concentrated as I'd normally do. I feel like if you are sort of new to matcha, you might wanna to try to ease yourself in. Maybe even use half a teaspoon if you're trying to do it like this at first and sort of build up because I definitely think it is an acquired taste. And that being said, it's so worth it. It's just so good for you. It's like taking your vitamins, you know? It's like become like that for me, like it's just part of my routine. And this will be my second matcha shot today. I should have thought this through. I'm gonna be so energized. And then I was planning to treat myself later and go get a coffee when I go to pick up my grocery order. So I'm gonna be bouncing off the walls, uh, but that's okay. I can find uh, something good to channel that energy into. So bottoms up. Not bad. Pretty smooth actually, probably because I'm used to doing like double the amount, but we are left with some sludge on the bottom. This happens when I make my normal shots too. It's just like the nature of matcha, I feel like. So I'm just gonna add a little more water just to make sure we get all of it because matcha is expensive. We can't let any go to waste. So I'll just give it a second little shake. And one more. That's definitely some quality matcha. So I just wanna give a ginormous thank you to Naoki Matcha for thinking of me and reaching out to me and sending me these amazing matchas. Like this is seriously like winning the lottery for me. Matcha is definitely a luxury item that I wouldn't be able to afford and use without these brands doing such kind things and sending me these to share with you guys. So I could never explain how much I appreciate and, and how much I, I don't take for granted that I am able to consume matcha every day and, and how good it makes me feel. And, and just to give me that extra ritual to get through the rough times we're in, you know? So thank you, Naoki, for supporting my good habit of matcha every day. I appreciate it so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed learning this new method to make a matcha shot. Let me know your favorite way to drink matcha. Do you do a shot or do you drink a full cup with water? Do you prefer a latte or an iced latte? Do you use dairy? Do you use non-dairy milks? I want to know everything about how you like to consume your matcha. But anyway, I hope you and your families are all staying safe and healthy. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.